Whether you're playing 40k or Kill Team, terrain is an important part of the tabletop experience. And considering the vast size of the Imperium, the chances are that you'll be fighting over an Imperial world. That's where structures such as those from the Sector Imperialis range comes in. And in this video, I'll be showing you how you can paint these ruins of mankind. Before you start painting your freshly assembled ruin, it is important to prime it first. The main reason for this is to ensure that the later layers of paint adhere to the surface correctly. However, we can also take this opportunity to shave off some painting time by using a colour primer. For this particular miniature, I've opted to use the Zandri Dust spray paint to give the ruin a sandstone-like colour. However, instead of just spraying directly over bare plastic, I started off with Chaos Black and sprayed the Zandri Dust over the top. This extra step may seem unnecessary at first glance, but this technique is an easy way of getting shading into your recesses. When spraying over the black with the Zandri dust, I didn't worry too much about getting the spray into all of those nooks and crannies. This meant that these recessed areas retain the black colouring of the first coat, creating the effect of shadows and added depth on the ruined surface. This extra layer of black is entirely optional though, and you could go straight ahead with the Zandri dust. After priming, our first task is to recreate a stone texture on the surface of the ruin. The easiest and fastest way to do this is to use a shabti bone and a dry brushing technique. To dry brush, take a relatively large brush and dip it into your paint. Then, using a spare piece of paper or tissue, lightly remove the paint from the brush until only a small amount of paint remains spread across the bristles. Then, quickly drag the brush over the ruined surfaces, while only applying a very light amount of pressure. This will cause the bristles to only touch the more raised sections of the model, and therefore the paint will accumulate on these areas. As only the most prominent parts of the surface will be painted, this helps to create the appearance of depth and shadow. Additionally, as dry brushing can often cause a dusty looking effect, this will go some way to adding a stone-like texture to the ruins as well. After the ruins walls have been dry brushed, we can now start to pick out some of the details. For this, I've opted to use Mechanica's Standard Grey. However, before applying the paint, we first of all want to water it down slightly. Thinning out the paint will not only make it easy to work with, but if we apply a couple of coats, we'll be left with a much smoother finish. So take your paint and mix it with an equal amount of water. The areas that you want to paint using your Mechanica Standard Grey are the inner wall panels on the ruined sections, the lights and also any pipes or wires scattered across your ruin. Now there are a few reasons that I have for using Mechanica Standard Grey. First of all, it is quite a dark paint that will contrast against the lighter coloured walls. Secondly, Mechanica Standard Grey is a base paint which means it has a higher pigmentation level. This will make it far easier to paint over large, lightly coloured surfaces. Finally, the grey is just light enough to be able to benefit from a wash of non-oil later on in the painting process. The next area to paint are the floors of the ruin. We'll be tackling these areas in much the same way as we did in the last step. So to paint these areas, mix a little staggered on scale green with some water in equal parts. I would recommend a large brush to paint the main section of the floor before switching to a finer brush to tackle the edges between the floor panels. Again, after allowing your first coat to dry thoroughly, apply a second coat of staggered on scale green across the floors. Continuing with the floors, we want to bring out some of those details and to do this we can make use of some dry brushing once again. This time around we'll be instead be using Thunderhawk Blue to pick out some of the sloped edges around the outside of the tiles, the bolt holes and finally the edges of the ruined floor panels. With the floors completed, we can now start painting the metallic areas of the miniature. We'll begin this process using lead belcher to paint all of the silver metallic areas. These include things like cables, vents, fans and pipes. When painting with metallics, be careful not to overspill onto other areas, as it can be quite tricky to cover up spills. So make sure you thin out your paint as we've done in previous steps, as this will make it a lot easier to cover up when you're tidying up things later on. The next metallic paint to use is Retributor Armor, and we'll be using this to paint all of the gold-colored areas of the ruin. These areas will be mostly limited to decorations, such as the Aquila motifs, lights, and some of the details on the floor panels. With all of our base coats completed, we can now start to add some definition to the ruin's details, as well as starting our weathering process. For the step, I'll be applying a wash of Agrax Earthshade across both the metallic areas and the ruins walls. However, before you start with your washes, I would recommend thoroughly cleaning your brushes and changing your paint water. 
The metallic paints that we used in the last step can leave behind metallic flakes, which if you're not careful can be accidentally transferred to your other non-metal areas or paints. When applying the wash over the gold sections, the brown wash will flow into the recesses, helping to create shading and depth. Over the silver areas, the brown wash will help to create a worn and rusted look to the metal. And finally, by applying a targeted wash into the various cracks in the walls, we can emphasize these particular details as well as adding some color variants to the stone surface. This next step once again sees us using a wash to emphasize certain details on the ruins. For the step, we'll be using Norn Oil across both the Mechanica standard grey areas and also the dark blue floors. To represent the accumulation of soot and smoke damage from fires, we will want to use a dry brush of a bad and black. We'll focus this dry brush mainly to the ruined columns and also the wall sections. However, we can also dry brush the black onto the areas above the windows and also on the inside of the ruins. This will create the appearance that the ruins have previously been set ablaze. The final step is to apply another dry brush, but this time we'll be using Necron Compound to pick out some of the edges of both the metallic areas and also the dark grey ruined wall panels. And here we have the completed ruin. Now before storing or using these ruins, I would recommend applying a varnish to protect the paintwork against any wear and tear. You can find a full list of all the paints used in this tutorial in the description below, along with the other equipment I used to create this video, such as my everlasting wet palette. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments below, and if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my Patreon page if you would like to support these videos. So the only thing left to say is thanks for watching, and goodbye.